It was 1975. This Hopkinsville household felt lucky. Susan Crowder was finally pregnant with her first child. Everybody loves being pregnant. Your cheeks are rosy, <laughs> you know. For Susan and her husband, the process to get pregnant wasn't easy. The couple turned to a well-known Louisville fertility doctor, Marvin Yesman, for help. I uh, really was only seen in his office twice. Susan had two children under his watch, using anonymous donors. Then the family moved away from Kentucky. She thought Louisville and the fertility appointments were only pinpoints of her past, until her daughter, now 45 years old, submitted DNA to Ancestry.com. All of a sudden, voila, we have seven step-siblings. Seven siblings she didn't know about before her daughter's DNA results. Seven siblings that all shared one dad. When she said that, I went, oh my God. The tests found Marvin Yesman, the doctor, was the biological father. The more I thought about it, it was like, you know, this is rude. This was really rude. Not only was my donor supposed to be anonymous, but I was supposed to be anonymous to the donor. A quick search of Yesman's name led Susan to his employer, U of L School of Medicine. First, we wrote to the university where Dr. Yesman was still practicing or was still teaching. In that email to the university, Susan wrote, quote, I feel betrayed. His behavior was immoral and unethical. She says it took months for U of L staff to respond, and when they did, they said he had since retired. In his retirement letter, Yesman wrote, he would not be doing this if he were not confronting serious personal circumstances. He also said he did not want to give up his basketball tickets. It made me mad. Next, she turned her attention to the Kentucky Board of Medical Licensure. She filed an official grievance stating, I realize Dr. Yesman did not break any laws. As such, I certainly feel his actions were unconscionable and depraved. This was never ethical. This wasn't right. Nobody ever expected doctors to inseminate their own patients. Yesman responded to the grievance, writing, quote, On very rare occasions when the donor did not show and no frozen specimen was available, I used my own sperm. An investigator with the board said Yesman admitted to using his own sperm to inseminate patients about half a dozen times. You picture this doctor engaging in the sex act while his patient is waiting for him down the hall. Dr. Jody Madeira yeah. is a professor at IU exactly School of Law and expert anything, in fertility right? fraud. And, and the patient is going to be laying there, you know, likely with her legs in stirrups uh, and a drape, and she might not even see that vial. You know, they, she may not even have an opportunity to check uh, or even think to ask, because who would suspect that this person you trust, the person that you've chosen to help you build your family, would deceive you? While Susan waited for word from the medical board, she says she received a note from an employee at U of L, asking her to drop the grievance. And he was encouraging me to withdraw my letter, and uh, I later found out that he is the head of OBGYN at the university. And he wasn't just a colleague; he was his boss. There's just along the line, it seems like people aren't very interested in this. And, and you know. then the line grew. The Kentucky Medical Licensure Board determined in Susan's case there was insufficient evidence of a violation of the Kentucky Medical Practice Act. So Yesman got to keep his license and continue his work with patients and students at U of L. I think it's very problematic that the medical board in Kentucky did not step up and protect the patient's rights in this instance. Kentucky has no law forbidding physicians from impregnating unwitting patients using their own semen. Most states don't. It's sad that we have to pass a law that says specifically, you know, doctors, it should be uh, a, a civil wrong and a criminal wrong to use your own gametes when a patient does not consent. One of the most prolific violators of fertility fraud was based just 100 miles north in Indianapolis. I felt like I was right 15 times and didn't know it. Dr. Donald Klein used his own sperm to inseminate dozens of women, and in turn, he fathered nearly 50 children. You can't really look in the mirror because you have no idea where your facial features come from anymore. The case inspired a new law in Indiana, making it a felony to misrepresent a medical procedure involving human reproductive material. Other states followed suit, and now it could be Kentucky's turn. I would like to see a law in Kentucky that protects these women who seek this treatment. Um, and it needs to be on the books as 
this isn't just an ethics thing. This is against the law. Right now, Dr. Jody Madeira is working with Susan Crowder and Kentucky lawmakers to begin the process of drafting local legislation that will criminalize fertility fraud. But she says it could be years before the bill is passed and the law enforced. For Focus, I'm Shay McAllister.